the trees that we have for shade growing over the coffee is a real interesting system because it's a complete farming system. Um, is not only the shade for the coffee, but the, the trees are called guama trees and the leaves are actually a nitrogen fixer. And so at the same time that they're being the shade for the coffee, they're actually being the fertilizer as well. And so the leaves will fall down and, and as they um, decompose, you know, that nitrogen is just building up in the soil and also increasing the yields. The, the, the plantation where we are right now, our first couple acres of coffee, it's a mature plantation. So it's been here at this point eight or nine years. And, and basically probably next year we'll start the process of growing again. But um, what, what we do when we harvest the coffee, you'll see kind of behind me you can see a lot of the beans are starting to get red and, and as soon as they start to get kind of an orange or a red color, we'll start to, um, we'll start to harvest them. basically just what it was like in my hand. They'll just pick red beans. And these are the beans that have ripened up enough to be ready to be roasted. And so from that point, they'll take the beans and we'll run them through a mill. And the mill machine is just a motorized machine that'll basically help us press all the beans. Um, it presses them out of the coffee cherries and then it starts to get the actual beans out of there. So we'll separate them and then all this pulp will go aside and then we'll use that as fertilizer later. Um, but then the, the coffee beans are ready to be washed and then from that point after washing process, um, some of them, the ones that aren't good, will float to the top. We'll kind of scoop them off. But the beans that are good, from that point are ready to go right into the sun. And so we'll, we have drying racks that will dry them in the sun. Every morning the guys pull a cover off of them. They'll move them around with their hand just so they get some fresh air. And then normally over the course of about two or three weeks, they're dry enough to be roasted. So you have to wait. There's a certain amount of humidity that can be in the bean um, for you to be able to roast it. If there's too much humidity before that, when you roast it, it won't have a good flavor. It won't have a good aroma. So that, you know, the, it's really important that our guys are, when they're dry enough, they'll throw the beans up into the air and by the sound of them hitting the other beans, they know whether they have enough humidity or not in it. So that's kind of the way that we decide whether we're ready to go and roast. And from that point, you know, we take them to the roasters and we just say what grade we'd like it roasted at and, um, and they'll roast it and package it and at that point it's ready to go. It just has a lot, a lot smoother flavor and a lot, um, it's still a rich flavor, but just a lot smoother flavor typically. As a ministry, you know, we've done so many projects to figure out what helps us be most self-sustaining. And over the course of five or six years, we've really narrowed they, those things down. And, and coffee has become our main way to help our ministry be self-sustaining. And so the children's home, um, already we produce about 5% of our annual income from coffee sales. And that's just with these two acres. You know, we have the, we live on a hundred acre farm, and so we have tons of potential to increase that and, and just grow in our ability to sustain um, to sustain the ministry. And what we've always thought is that you know, as, as missionaries, we're a mission organization, and, and we're run by people's generosity. But you know, what we hope to do is to teach our kids that their first instinct would be, how can I provide for myself? How can I provide for my family? What can I do? And so I think what we really want to do is give them the skills to go on and provide for their family someday.